Are you an HR department of one trying to figure out how to balance task and strategy while keeping up with changes in regulatory compliance? Do you need a fresh outlook on old topics? Then stop what you're doing, grab your coffee, and get ready to recharge. If you have people, you have problems to solve and things to do. Your host is Brenda Neckvottle, a 20-year human resource professional, ready to explore the HR industry with veterans of business and life with fresh eyes and new ideas. Learn about the rapidly evolving changes in employment law around the country, as well as new tactics to deploy and build engagement in your workforce. If you're looking to implement new practices, practices to make your job easier in HR, then this podcast is for you. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Best Practices in Human Resources podcast. I am Brenda, the HR lady, and I'd like to thank you for listening to the show. If you're a returning listener, thank you so much for returning yet for another episode. And if you're a first time listener, well, welcome. I'm here to help share with you the strategic and the tactical HR knowledge so that you can master the what and the how in this field, because I'm in the human business. And that means there's a greater number of dynamics in the workplace to balance and manage. And this is yet another year of craziness, but not full of uncertainty. And as we inch towards the return to normalization, please keep this in mind. Don't be marginally happy. Your success and achievements begin and end with you. Give to never receive in this business, but if you invest in yourself, keep the balance, and build strong working relationships with your company leaders, you're going to excel. So folks, can you do me a favor? If you've been enjoying the podcast, please hop over to Apple Podcast Stitcher or iHeartRadio and please give us a five-star rating. We know that there's a lot of really good folks out there like you who are looking for information like this, and strong ratings help us find them and them help find us. So we give a lot of really great information and I'm just really here to help you guys out. And you can also find really great nuggets of information on my social platforms where you can find me on Instagram and Facebook, YouTube, and Clubhouse, especially in Clubhouse by searching for Brenda the HR Lady. And over on LinkedIn, you can find me by name, my name, which is Brenda Neckvottle. That's N-E-C-K, like the thing you want to choke, V as in Victor, A-T-A-L. And before I forget, make sure that you guys also tune in every Monday over on YouTube where you can find me and my partner in shine in HR, Suzanne Lucas, at The Real HR Show. And we do all sorts of really cool topics throughout the week. All right, so today I'm going to share with you employment law changes that are happening across the nation and how you can get access to vital HR news that impacts your business every day. And we're also going to be talking about how to crush the day with my good friend, Drew B. Wilson, and then also going to get into the HR question of the day. So before we begin, begin, folks, the information that is available through this podcast is for informational purposes only and not for the purpose of providing legal advice. You should contact your attorney to obtain legal advice with respect to any particular issue that you may be having. And if you do not have an employment attorney, go ahead and please reach out to me and I'll be more than happy to refer one to you through our affiliate program and our friends over in Jackson Lewis. Our major headline that we're going to be talking about here in just a little bit, I want to highlight, is a ever-growing topic of concern in all aspects of the USA and just about every, every way. And what has happened is that Amazon is now being sued for revoking job offers from people who tested positive for smoking marijuana or consumption of marijuana. And this is happening over in New York City, by chance, which is something that is kind of a dodgy subject over there. So this is a very complicated issue. It's a very complicated issue, especially in government, the field of government contracting. And there's this battle that's taking place quietly between the state and the Fed, where the Fed still has marijuana listed as a Schedule One item on that list, but yet states are taking it upon themselves to go ahead and decriminalize and legalize use of marijuana for recreational purposes, as well as medicinal. This has been around for a long time. So it's going to get very, very, very confusing as we move forward. And at some point in time, we're going to wind up going to the Supreme Court. I just don't know who, what state, what company, all this is going to happen. But this is going to be a big one because this is a fairly large target. Now, HR is more than ever a self-service experience rather than the full service at the pump, which is requiring HR champions and pros to actually be even more resourceful and vigilant than ever before. And we can no longer rely on that single source outlet for the vast rapid changes that we've been experiencing and taking place in our country. And we have to learn to rely on reputable multiple channels of information. Well, guess what? We have exactly that. 
We have a site that offers exactly that. It's a consolidated wealth of HR information that you can tap into that includes access to current HR news, which includes six major employment news categories, COVID updates, employment law, legal updates, litigation, collective bargaining and unionization, affirmative action, EEO and reporting and OFCC updates, as well as disability. Now you can get real-time comprehensive updates for individual states. There's over 100 streaming articles from nearly 70 resources across the U.S. and one in Canada at any point in time. And there's downloadable tools, videos, and case law summaries. And the best part, it is extremely affordable. Okay, we want this to be affordable for you guys. It's only $9 a month and we offer a 15-day love it or get it back Love it or get your money back guarantee. This is less than what you pay for coffee in a week. You pay more for coffee in a week than what you do for a whole month subscribing to this. And if you don't like it, you know what? Like I said, 15 days, you can go ahead and get your money back. That's not a problem. So here's how you get to it. You go to uh, brendathehrlady.com. You click on HR resources and you'll be able to go ahead and subscribe. There are approximately 2,500 members of the U.S. Special Operations community who transition out of active duty military service every single year. The Honor Foundation has dedicated its mission to serving these elite individuals on their journey to prepare for life once they take off the uniform. In the past few years, we've begun our own journey to reach this number, launching three physical campuses in San Diego, California, Virginia Beach, Virginia, and near Wilmington, North Carolina along with a virtual campus to reach members of the community anywhere on the planet. I spent 26 years in the Special Operations community as a SEAL. I graduated from THS program, I served on the board of directors, and now I'm proud to lead this organization into the future to continue assisting these transitioning service members and their families. Our dedicated team, our world-class program, and our incredible tribes of supporters are standing by to help THF alumni and future fellows and are committed to providing the best possible support system and resources to better serve this community. Our vision for the Honor Foundation is clear, to impact every transitioning service member from the U.S. Special Operations Enterprise through our programs and support, and to be a catalyst for overhauling the entire DOD transition program. It's a big task, but the community deserves it, and we're driving full steam ahead to make this a reality. If you've been inspired with what the Honor Foundation has done in the last five years, I welcome you all to join us as we craft the next chapter in defining what it means to serve others with honor for life. Today, folks, we have got a awesome awesome guest on with us. Um, we met each other actually just a little while ago for the first time. Uh, we are associating with each other now. It's a big word, associating with one another in an executives group um, and got a chance to talk on the phone a few times and then saw each other in person at the last event down in Dallas. And now he is here. He has had some tremendous success with a new book, that he just dropped and I cannot wait till you guys hear about it. I have a copy of it and it is absolutely raw, awesome <clears throat> and uplifting all at the same time, folks. I'd like to welcome Drew B. Wilson. Hi, you. How are you? That's a heck of an introduction. <laughs> uh, I, I guess I need to like step my game up a little bit. No, I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for asking. Uh, thank you for having me here to share with you and your audience. It's been a blast getting to know you in the last couple of weeks since we connected and, and certainly excited to continue watching your journey because you're doing some amazing stuff. Oh, thank you so that. I really appreciate that. That's awesome. So speaking of journeys, holy cow, your journey last week just, I think it's great. So what I'm referring to is that Drewby just, just dropped a brand new book in Amazon. And not only is he an Amazon best-selling author on what the day that you, the day that it dropped. Yeah. Same day. It took about 12 same hours. Day. And, and, but not only was it the same day, but it was in multiple categories, which is, and, and it stayed for several days. So guess what? That means he's got really good stuff that he's sharing. Hey, well, I certainly appreciate that. And I uh, mm -hmm. am very excited about the book. I was very blessed 
to have some amazing inspiration to help me get it done. Having a strong network of people to really get that message out there. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, I'm, I've been telling people it's a very surreal experience. I bet. You know, I, I failed sophomore English like three times probably. So to, to say that I went from that to, you know, being a best-selling published author, it, it's definitely been an amazing journey. And uh, that's just one of the reasons I wrote the book so that I could talk about that journey and help the people who are out there feeling plateaued or average in their life, yes. figure out how they can really find that little bit of extra inside to go from ordinary to extraordinary. Yeah. And that's not an easy path for anybody to take alone. And that's the thing. And, um, you know, I got a chance to kind of dip into your book a little bit uh, just because it's I, it's just been a fire streak behind me ever since I got back. But would you please do me a favor and kind of help people understand who you are, where you come from, what you do, you know, kind of help them understand a little bit about you? Yeah, absolutely. So, again, I'm Drew B. Wilson. I am the vice president of Break Free Academy. We're a multi-million dollar coaching and consulting company. We work with sales professionals, entrepreneurs, CEOs, executives. And uh, what we do is we help match your reality to the most elite version of yourself, right? So if you're trying to picture what your life looks like, if you're the happiest you've ever been, you're in the best shape of your life, you have the greatest relationships, right? Our, Our goal is working with you to help put you on the path to getting to become that person. Because the cool thing about working with like-minded, success-driven individuals is that we all have our own perspective about what success truly means, right? So some people, it's making a lot of money. For others, it's just getting the time to travel and be with their friends and family. But when you get around the right group of people, uh, it, everybody motivates each other to really get to that that level and to have that kind of success. And so it's that's really what I do is I work with winners, right? And we help people become bigger winners. Yeah. And mm. part of my job doing that is I do sales, I do marketing, I uh, do a little bit of coaching in our programs. And, you know, I think for me, the, the most fun about what I do is, is I kind of joke with people that I get to hang out on Facebook all day and make memes and make money while I'm doing it. You do. <laughs> so it's kind of a cool gig. Yeah, you do. I've seen some of them. They're pretty funny. But um, what I love about what you're saying <clears throat> is talking about how being in a group of high performers and a group of winners, which is which is a lot of what we try and accomplish over at in the Next Gen Women in HR Facebook group, right? It's a group for HR people to come in and actually have those conversations with one another. Um, and, and, you know, like 76%, I actually confirmed that number the other day, 76% of HR pros and champions that are in the seat are actually in fact female and they're women. And that means that they have very unique challenges to that are a little bit different than entrepreneurs. You know, they wake up in the morning. uh, If they have a family, then they are waking up in the morning to take care of people, to go to work, to then take care of people and then to come home to finish the day, taking care of people and everybody else's stuff. So it can, it, it can be a beat down. I've been there. I mean, I don't have people to take care of, right? I have a dog, but I, you know, I don't, I I can get beat down just like anybody else, just from the stuff that I engage in. So that's one of the things that I loved about your book. Uh, The title of it is crushing the day, crushing the day and what exactly that means. So would you kind of share a little bit about your book, please? Or share as much as you want about your book. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no, absolutely. I appreciate it. Um, So yeah, my book is called Crushing the Day, a simple guide to success in business and life through service to others. Because that honestly is what I believe has helped me get to where I'm at currently in my life, which is in in all considerations, the peak of my life, right? I'm, I'm 33, but I'm in the best shape of my life. I'm making more money than I've ever made. My relationships at home are greater than they've ever been. And the people that I'm surrounded by Mm -hmm. are at the top tier. And the reason that I wrote the book is because I've been on this journey the last few years of like really diving deep on personal development. You know, growing up, I have kind of a storied past, some things that I had to deal with. uh, and, And I kind of talk about those in the book, but you know, it wasn't always easy. It certainly wasn't the worst, but I've always had some, some things that I struggled with and, and had to figure out along the way um, going down this journey. 
of, you know, life and, and business and growing and trying to understand adulthood, if you will, and, and, you know, helping others, providing value, being of service has always allowed me to be successful in pretty much any opportunity that I took. So whether it was, you know, selling cigars and tobaccos at 20 years old with zero experience there or selling furniture or insurance or now even coaching and consulting, I've always approached every conversation with the idea of how can I help the person on the other side solve the problem that they're facing. And I think that relates great with HR because that's, that's essentially what you do all day, right? You're, you're helping people so that they can go out and help people, but you're having to do it in a little bit of a different way because you're still dealing with the internal dynamics of a, a group of people that are all working together in somewhat of harmony, hopefully. Uh, but you know, there's a lot of personalities there. There's a lot of different things that you have to understand and be able to show empathy and confidence. So it's very much like sales, right? You're, you're persuading someone to act or behave in a certain way so that it falls in line with the culture, but is also in their best interest right. to be successful. And, and so, you know, a lot of the things that I've gone through in my life, uh, some of the different, you know, tragedies and, and traumas and struggles, I, I try to always look for the lessons in those, like, hey, what is it that, you know, I, I went through this thing and it was rough, but like, what did I learn from it? What can I take away that I can then implement in my consistent routine to make me a better person, a better version of myself? Because if I'm living my best life and I'm being the best version of myself, then I'm hopefully setting the example for the people around me, my wife, my son, my community, the people that I'm coaching with, right? If I'm living in excellence and setting that example, then they have something to follow. And so that's kind of why I wrote the book is so I could kind of catalog the things that I've achieved, you know, from being born until now at 33, knowing this is the peak of my existence so far so that I can then, you know, continue growing and building on myself personally to continue growing and helping the people around me. Cause I've always said the success in my life will be directly correlated to the success that I help bring to the people around me. Absolutely. So what motivated you to, to write the book? Um, so, you know, I'm around a bunch of elite people. And one of the things they, they talk about is, you know, to be an authority, to be someone that can have that no like and trust factor that's important in, in some kind of, you know, business relationship or even, you know, a relationship with colleagues like that. That's part of the process is you have to share your story. You have to let people see what you've done and where you've been so that they can relate with you. And, you know, in doing so, you're opening up an opportunity to help people, right? Like if I help one person change their life, they find that little bit of extra inside themselves and then they go on to cure cancer or become the president or some kind of amazing thing. Like even if it never actually gets directly related, like, oh, I read your book and that led me to doing this. If even if it just happens, that ripple effect, I mean, the thought of that is amazing to me to, to leave a legacy of some sort like that on this earth. Uh, I, I think that's kind of what motivated me to write the book and, and to talk about what I've been through to get where I am. Because, you know, I, in my eyes, I still know I have a long way to go, but to go from, you know, where I was as a tech support guy to being the vice president of a multi-million dollar company, there, there's lessons that are valuable. There's someone who's out there who's sitting at a desk right now feeling very average or discouraged yeah. because they're kind of like in this little glass box and they've got all this energy and they know that they can do good with it, but they're kind of being restrained by compliance or regulations or whatever, right? Like if I can just the help boss. that one person. Man, <laughs> please. The, the folks upstairs, that's Work why I always load. blame yeah I'm always like nah it's the folks upstairs like I gotta call them and get whatever well we got but people yes. sitting here listening to this that are feeling exactly like that right now yeah and and that's what you were telling me that you know there, there's a little bit of struggle in the, the industry right now where where people are trying to understand like how best to serve yeah the people they work with so tell me a little bit more about that <laughs> now I'm being interviewed on my own podcast this is I awesome mean, you know, we're, we're I ripping. love it we're, that's we're great no, that's brilliant. I love it. No. So 
you know, there's a lot of folks that are out there right now that are really trying to figure out <clears throat> how do they address the culture issue right now when they are in the HR seat and they're not the leader. There's a lot of people that are trying to figure out how do we keep our employees safe from this COVID thing that still seems to be unraveling and unveiling all sorts of new challenges. I mean, I actually, in one of the networking groups that I'm in, um, I actually have a gentleman that is up against some pretty serious health conditions because he had COVID several months ago and they suspect that now he's got a liver condition as a result of that, you know? <clears throat> so they have people that are trying, you know, they're trying to figure out like, how do we, how do we help our people? How do we, how do we keep a positive workforce when nobody can come in and make those massive connections? Because, you know, when people don't feel safe, they can't connect. They, they just can't, right? Look it up. It's Maslow's hierarchy needs. They just, they just can't do it. Um, you got people that are trying to figure out how the hell do you hire frontline physicians right now? Nobody wants to work. I mean, I'm recruiting for three of them right now and we haven't I got one today and that was it. And these are easy positions to apply for, but people are still staying home because they can get unemployment benefits from the government, you know, and it's a lot, man, the world has just been a lot of negative. And people are feeling crushed and they're feeling underneath the boulder. You know, they're longing and, and looking for the days of when they felt really good about something. I mean, our, even our national conference had to get canceled and they didn't flip it to a virtual. So we didn't get that kind of nourishment. I go because that's what nourishes me, right? I'm around new energy. I'm around different people. I'm around new technologies. I'm, I'm around new information. Or I've seen, I've seen or heard it a thousand times, but I've picked up one nugget that has actually connected the dots for me. And it has made a world of difference because like, I know that this isn't supposed to happen this way, but I don't know why. And I have a whole library of those things and I've yet to find the answer, but I go to, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, sessions and stuff like that. And then that magic, and then that connection happens. And then that just, you know, it fuels my fire, right? So we've just had a lot of that. We've had a lot of people, um, you know, we've watched employees that we care about not sure if they're coming back, not sure, you know, you know, where the state of the con of the company is in the country. And yet then we've also had the other side of that, where we've had companies where when other aspects of our economy have been pulling in and reining in, you know, for safety. Now we got people that are, you know, companies that it's just like their business is exploding. I mean, I had a, a guy who's got a cleaning company I know. Today, he announced that his, his company grew by 300%. They lost 60% of their business in the month of March and April. And he was faced with possibly going out. And then suddenly it turned around. And next thing you know, it's 300% growth. He went from six people to 22 people in his work. Holy mackerel. Yeah. So it's, it's interesting, you know, but even when you have that massive amount of growth, it's good energy and it's good stress, but it, nonetheless, it's still stress. So, you know, you, I've had a lot of really positive experiences, but I'm tired too, you know, and I have, to, <laughs> I, I'm not allowed to be right. I'm the one that has to have the energy. So I have to figure out how I deal with me. But I, I think that, you know, that's really what we've been experiencing out in HR. Then we're dealing with new laws. How do we deal with this? There's all this ambiguity. How does this not negatively impact somebody? And what happens when the company makes the wrong decision and it's out of your control? Oh, and then it gets litigated and you're like, crap, we did it wrong. You know, there's all these things that are happening for us right now. And that's just us. I mean, it's the world is certainly in a very strange place right now. <laughs> yeah, I think it is. I would say that's accurate. <laughs> The way I try to look at it is, you know, again, coming back to that living in excellence and being the example. Right. And, and I think that's something we can all do that is totally underrated. And, and I understand we're all having our struggles, right? We're all got things that are driving us crazy at work, at home, in our own lives that we're unhappy with. Like we're all having struggles. But I think in order to carry the movement forward, right? Especially for those of you who have to burden so many things being in the position that you're in, whether you're the matriarch at home and you're having to take care of everything there and you're having to take care of a bunch of kids at the office, you know, kids being a loose term, but you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. 
Um, There's a few juveniles. You know, <laughs> I'm just saying it, it's it, the burden is there. Yeah. But I think when we're focused on living in excellence and being leaders and, and it comes back to the empathy and the confidence too, right? Like, Hey, I empathize with the situation. I understand you're frustrated and you're, you're having these problems. However, the kind of nice part about it is we're all having to deal with the same stuff. So it's not like any one of us has like this main issue that, you know, it's like, Oh, I'm the only one. Well, no, we're, we're all dealing with it. Yeah. So I think, you know, and, and again, I'm not an HR and I'm not a, you know, like I don't know all the ins and outs, but the way I look at it is if you're living in excellence and everybody who comes to you and relies on you and trusts in you knows that you always have the good of the people in your heart. And those are the actions that you take. I really don't think you have to stress yourself out so much about it. As long as you can be confident that every decision you're making is in the best interest of the people and the, you know, that you serve, then you really, you know, if you make a wrong decision, you make a wrong decision, but you know what, the people are still going to uh, appreciate the fact that you made that decision because you trusted your gut. You went with what you thought was the best for your people. And I think that's, what's the most important part about it. That's what leadership is all about. It's, you know, yeah, it's dealing with the struggle and the pressure and the ambiguity yep. of things. But that's why the people elected you for that situation, because they trust in your decision making. So you just have to be confident in yourself and know, you know, as long as you're searching down in your heart of hearts and you're like, yes, this is a decision I would make for my family, for my people. Yeah. Then I don't think you can really be wrong. No. And I like how you said that they trust that, you know, it's a decision, but it's also a trust in the fact that they can count on you to get the job done. And it maybe not necessarily always making a decision. It's just making sure that stuff is done, you know, that, yeah. you know, you're not putting the company in, you know, jeopardy. And you know what, you're going to have managers that are going to step out of bounds. So you're going to have managers going to say stupid things. You're going to have, you know, leaders that are going to say something that has been misinterpreted or somebody's taking offense to that comes with the job, you know, that absolutely comes with the job. But for a leader to know that they've got somebody that they don't have to worry about is awesome. And that's a good feeling. And if, and if you're that person, man, you should be looking at yourself every day in the mirror and toting that banner because that's not something that every leader has. I mean, you guys are, yeah. you guys have a team that's really awesome because you've got a, you've got a bunch of high performers that people get stuff done all the time. I mean, we kind of have a zero options mentality and, and you know, our, our motto is FYE and, and we'll keep it censored for the audience, <laughs> but you know, uh, let's just say that excuses are not accepted <laughs> in, in the kindest of terms. Um, but, and, yeah, and I exactly. think, but it all comes back to leadership, right? Like yeah. Ryan, he's, he's the boss, essentially he runs the show, but he inspires all of us to behave that way because, because of the culture that he created like this is the way we operate and we're pretty transparent about that when people come on board and even with our clients we say listen this is how we run our business we don't expect you to adopt everything but there's some specific reasons we are where we are because of the principles and the culture that we live by right. and if you implement this in your life and in your business we're pretty dang confident that you're going to see the results from it as well. And, and I think that's why it's so important, especially for the folks in HR to, to remember how important they are to that culture because they set the example, right? Yep. You have to be the example of what it takes. Yeah, it sucks. And being yes. a leader isn't for everybody, but you know what, if, if you care and that's what you were put on this earth to do is to serve and, and to be the leader, then be the leader and own up to it. So here's something that I think can also be a commonplace because I know I fell down this trap years ago. And that is <clears throat> that there's an expectation amongst people who are stepping up and they are being the example. And I've heard it so many times. They're, they're demonstrating, they're modeling the desired behavior. But then there's something inside of them that requires them to get some form of acknowledgement that 
that they need to be, you know, somebody needs to say, Hey, listen, you know, such and such Susie Q over there is doing exactly what we needed to do. We're saying something about it. And when they don't get it, guess what happens? Uh, Yeah. Animosity sets in or they don't feel like they're being recognized. And, you know, leadership is not perfect and leadership is hard. Being, being a leader is tough and, and you, you can't, you can't be soft when it comes to being a leader. You just, you just can't, you're not leading. You're getting run over at that point. But in your book, do you talk about, and you may have, and I don't know because I haven't gotten there yet, but do you talk about how somebody can figure out the path or find a way that they can find the strength to, to keep themselves lifted up when nobody else is there to do it? Yeah. I mean, you got to understand that sometimes you're the only person applauding for yourself. There you go. For your actions. Um, and, and I kind of touch on it in the book a little bit, but like more in depth, that's one of the things that I think is one of a pivotal moments about personal development and growth personally is when you can be okay, just cheersing yourself for your accomplishments. That's when you can really start getting more done. And, and it, it is, it's a psychological need that we all need the add of boys yep. and the add of girls and the great job. And you're, you're winning one for the get, like we all need that. And, and we all have to give that. Yeah. Um, like that's one of the integral parts of being a leader is sometimes you have to sink down to that level and say, Hey, you know, what, what did I need at that point? Like when I was there, what would have helped me be better and more attentive and, and give it more? And sometimes it is just that note, that that gratification of like, hey, you're doing a great job. So one thing that that I think was really interesting um, when we went to our mastermind in Cabo a few weeks ago, we had uh, Pastor Keith Kraft down there. Now, he is an absolute amazing speaker. He's traveled all around the world. He used to roll with Zig Ziglar and some of the top sales trainers in the world and do events with them, like 30 events a year. But anyway, something he did really stood out to me. Um, and, and I've been trying harder to implement this in my life and it, it's taking some work, but he came up to me and, and during the event and he, he placed his hand on my shoulder. And again, I know you can't always touch people. There's a weird word. But <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, like just a very gentle approach. And he said, Hey man, you're doing a great job. I uh, really appreciate you. And then he paused for a second. He's like, would you mind finding me a chair? I don't want to stand. I'm just going to sit and do my presentation. And, you know, it was just a real simple favor, but the nuance of it wasn't lost on me. Mm -hmm. He made sure to greet me and to, you know, to tell me something good about me before asking for that favor. And I remember thinking like that dude could have probably asked me to do anything and I would have done it because he put me in an emotional state of receptiveness. Right. And so this is something that I'm trying to work on more. And and again, it's, it takes a little bit, you know not just directly asking for something, but approaching with, Hey, you're doing a great job today, or just some sort of compliment to make someone smile and get that emotional energy up before starting a conversation. Because I think, you know, and you touched on this earlier, that energy that you can get when you Mm -hmm. interact with people the right way. Right. I mean, there's a lot of power in that. Yeah, absolutely. There is something that made me think a little bit when we're talking about, you know, how people tend to there, you know, there, there's a stage in their life where they feel, and we, and I know we have people who are listening that they feel that they need to be acknowledged for the work that they're doing. And, you know, after a while that, you know, also being in service to others is not always simple either. It is a very humbling thing. And one of the things that, you know, I'll be honest, I used to really need people to tell me, that I was doing a good job because I really didn't know, like I needed that feedback. And oh, I still need that feedback. I feel the same myself. Like we all do. Sure we do. But I got to a point where I'm like, you know what? <laughs> if I, if somebody's not coming to chew my butt out, <laughs> I think I'm doing all right. You know? So I started looking at it in a different way. And at, when I changed my perception, um, I was able to kind of break free of my, insecurity about things. And then I started adapting and I'm not really quite sure where I got it from. I think I just kind of started doing it. All I did was start just consistently 
moving forward. And the only vision that I have, and you know what, it's probably an, an abundance mindset more than likely, but every day I just move forward. And the thing that I don't do anymore is I don't look back. If I've done something to help somebody out, fantastic, great, move on. Who's next? What do we got? I got stuff to do, right? I just keep that, keep putting that foot in front. And now I'm to a point where actually I get caught off guard when somebody says, oh my gosh, I really appreciate what you did for me. And I'm like, what did I do? Because I don't remember what I did. <laughs> you know? You're welcome. You're right, right, exactly. And it's just that, you know, I'm so, I'm so focused with moving forward. I don't even remember what I did for somebody. Right. But I hear it all the time. And then I'm just like, Oh, you're fat. You're fantastic. And I'm thinking like, what the hell did I do? <laughs> I <have> no idea. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but I'm glad they liked it, whatever it was. And you know what, that has allowed me personally, a lot of freedom to not feel those insecurities. Now I'm starting to question my memory, but <laughs> you know, but that's a whole different problem. Yeah, I know. Right. Exactly. Um, but that's exactly what's happening. It's really kind of an interesting phenomenon. It's just, I just keep moving forward. I keep moving forward and I keep, because when you're in motion, whether it be emotionally, physically work mentally, right. You're moving data around when you're in motion, you have, you have no other vision, but to look ahead. And, and that is really, truly an abundance mindset. It's not a, a mindset to where if you're looking back, it means that you're lacking something. I agree. And I, I think it's almost kind of, you know, likened to, you know, like when you go and start working out, right. You, you don't see the results immediately. You, you have to just keep showing up and doing the work and just doing like the tedious day-to-day -day stuff that you're kind of like, I really don't necessarily understand why I'm doing this so much, but like, this stinks. <laughs> this is the process, right? Yeah. Like I gotta, I gotta do this paperwork. I gotta send these reports. I gotta file with so-and-so like, we all have these things that we have to do on a consistent basis that we're kind of like, this is stupid. <laughs> but the reason that you're doing them is the compound effect, right? You yeah. don't notice the results after going to the gym for a month because you see yourself every day. But when an outsider comes in who does know you and hasn't seen you and all of a sudden they're like, wow, you look amazing. Like, yeah. you know, you don't recognize the small incremental changes because they're small and incremental. But someone from the outside will notice that. And, and like you were saying, what, what's cool and what starts to happen is when those people do show up, like it, it's small and fleeting and, and you may not remember exactly what that thing was for, but like that feeling is that much stronger. You're just like, Oh, cool. I did it again. Like on this hard day, I've been, you know, like I've been working and doing my thing and, and, you know, like whatever I did three days ago, help this person. And, and now they're just starting to see the fruits of that. And, and it's, you know, yep. it's like tending a garden and you're planting seeds and you're pulling weeds yeah. and you're watering and you're doing this and doing that and you're moving all over. And then one day you look up and it's like, wow, that's amazing. Yeah. The same thing in your business and the same thing in the relationships that you have with people, you just have to get used to knowing that there's good on the other side, even on the rainy days, even on when, you know, you're struggling. Yep. Just got to keep moving forward. Yep. I, it's the best advice I can give. Well, Druby, where can people find your book? So it's on Amazon. Uh, you can search crushing the day. I don't think we're a bestseller anymore, but you know, it's still on there. It's, it's easy to find. Oh, you, you, um, you, you wear that, you wear that tiara forever now. <laughs> it, I would look good in a tiara. <laughs> we'll try that someday. No. Um, yeah. Bring one down find to Dallas on Amazon. Time. Um, you know, just search crushing the day. I also have it available on my website, which is crushing the day.com. I've got cool hats and t-shirts and, and fun little stickers and stuff as a memento to make sure that, you know, you, you go to bed every night knowing that you crushed the day before it crushed you. That's awesome. Well, thank you so very much for coming on. This is, this has been big and you know what, I hope folks really take a chance to order your book and, and, and take some nuggets away that will actually help them through a, a pretty challenging time. Well, I'm just grateful and honored to be here. Uh, I think this was a lot of fun. It's, it's always, like I said, been a blast getting to chat more with you and, and hear more of your story and, and some of the successes that you've had because you're doing some amazing things. And oh, thank you. I just, I just really appreciate the heck out of you. That's all. Oh, I appreciate you too. This is awesome. Thank right, you well, so much. No, thank you.
All right, guys, with the increase of COVID, and I, even though I know we are well on our way out, and that's fine, um, you know, I have a real big section on taking care of yourself, and it's really important that you guys do it now more so than other, and you don't become complacent. Look, we got spring coming around the corner. We got summer rounding out after that, and a lot of people are already starting to shed their layers because the weather is starting to turn nicer. So you know I care about everybody's ability to get rest and recover. It's a huge focus of mine. <clears throat> I'll be honest with you, last week I pushed it way, way too hard, but I didn't get sick and I got caught up on my sleep, but man, it really, <laughs> it really did me in last week. So I'm, I'd like to share with you what it is that I use. I don't get paid for these things. Um, this is just, everything that I found that really works well. And I love all of these things. So first off, Trulene. I use Trulene's fish oil to help supplement uh, what's going on with my brain function. My father has Alzheimer's. I don't want to wind up like that. So I'm making sure that I'm using Trulene's fish oil to go ahead and give myself the nutrients that helps my brain functions. I also use Trulene's immunity shot. Um, when I'm starting to feel run down, I get that 2 p.m. crash. <clears throat> I pop open a packet of that, pop it in some water. Um, it's great. It's, it's a wonderful citrus flavor. It's got a little perk to it because it does have cayenne and black pepper. It has uh, turmeric and ginger in it. And it's just, a, it's a wonderful drink. And it, in the huge shot of B12 in it, well, I wouldn't say huge, but definitely I notice it. And then uh, it gets me back up and running again. Um, also, Naked Warrior Recovery, I use their immunity booster at night. So I do an immunity shot in the afternoon. I do the immunity booster at night. Awesome stuff. And I also use uh, the Super Greens from Naked Warrior Recovery as well for midday snacks and urges. Lastly, and most importantly, though, I do use their CBD gummies. They're, it's a, it's a um, broad spectrum, which means that there is no THC in it. And it's actually what helps me get a, f a decent night's sleep. I start, I pop a gummy at about five o'clock. Then I do another one before I go to bed. Helps me slow my day down towards the back end of the day so I can get that much needed rest. And then lastly, I use MASF Smashing Greens. I replace, I uh, use one meal replacement a day. It is a real rich, rich, um, dense nutrient uh, formula. It's awesome. I really like it. I do two if I start fasting, so I replace two meals and then I eat um, a high protein meal uh, throughout the afternoon. And then uh, I use the plant-based multivitamin. It is one of the few multivitamins that are out there that it does not cramp my stomach. So if you'd like to learn more about these, go ahead and follow me on my social platforms where I periodically share more information. You can definitely go back into the history and find all that information. So we have nine more months of HRing to do in 2021. And if you want to stop floundering, start focusing, make sure you grab your copy of the best HR planner on the planet. It is something that will help you build your confidence in the HR position, helps you feel good knowing what you're, that you're on top of things, what needs to be done, and not being buried under a mountain of deadlines. It's a very reasonable price. It's got 60 pages of really, really great content in there has a 12-month calendar, has a 12-month overview calendar, has a listing of all the holidays, much, much, much more. It has a listing of all of the laws that you need to follow based off of your company size. Definitely well worth the investment. We've already burned through one order, and I actually uh, almost doubled. I, I ordered one and a half times more uh, because we had so many people coming through. So we've got more calendars and we've got more planners. Um, we're going to continue to sell them on through the rest of the year. And 2022's version is going to be even better, but we're not there yet. So we're going to be, we're going to be working through 2021 first because we are in the present. So you folks know that I love getting your, your HR questions. <clears throat> you can submit your questions to me on brendathrlady.com website by clicking on the podcast link from the menu and down towards the bottom of the podcast page is a submission form for you to go ahead and post your question, which I will more likely read and answer on an upcoming episode. So I did wind up getting one in. Uh, the other day it says i'm following you and i learn a lot thank you very much but it seems like there's so much that is changing hr is this normal or am i looking at hr in the wrong light so um yes and no <laughs> this, this is my maybe answer right so first off know that right now everything is crazy and everything is changing but things aren't changing so what is changing is anything that has to do with covid right uh, working from home, 
you know, safe workspaces, you know, CDD, C, excuse me, CDC is constantly giving us the necessary updates. What aren't, what isn't changing is all of the laws that we had before, right? Um, Drug-Free Workplace Act of 1988, Civil Rights, Title VII hasn't changed, uh, America with Disabilities Act, like, like all that stuff, it hasn't gone anywhere. But here's the thing, a lot of this stuff doesn't always play nice with each other, right? So we know that we're going through a lot of COVID litigation right now. Workplace leave has been the biggest, biggest, biggest um, category of lawsuits that are out there. It's very, very high. It's about, I looked this morning on uh, Fisher Phillips litigation tracker and it's like 479 cases. It's crazy. So that's what's changing really fast. If it has anything to do with COVID, that's what's changing really fast. Other than that, a lot of our stuff is normal, but we do have a president that's in-house that is really focusing in on making additional changes. And he's a very, very, very labor-focused individual, labor-focused president. So right now, a lot of our regulations um, in all the divisions are actually currently undergoing a review. I've never seen anything like this before but guarantee we're going to see an increase in a lot of different areas as it pertains to labor. So, you know, you got to stay on top of this stuff. And we gave you a, gave you a resource in the beginning of the episode that, you know, it's, it's very, very affordable. We do that on purpose because we want people to have access to this, but you know, with the volume, we do need to have people cover the cost for this. Otherwise, you know, we would do something else with it. But, um, you know, you can take advantage of that and, you know, always continue listening to the podcast because we really are here to help. And I, and thank you guys so much for jumping in and spending time with us today. Uh, it's been great. Another really great epic guest. We've got more epic guests coming up and can't wait to talk to you guys next week. Have a good one. 